Ever since I saw these tapes for the first time and uh, ended up building my Universal QAC reader hardware and system uh, because of them, I wondered what was so different. I wondered what was so different about these tapes as compared to others. Because these say pre-formatted. It's not just a DC-600A like my other tapes are. Um, it's a DC-600HC and it's pre-formatted. There, I'll compare with the regular one here. DC-600A was what I was used to before. But this one is a DC-600HC. And on the reels here, we see pre-formatted. Do not degauss. Pre-formatted. So there's a pretty strong message here that tells me that there's some kind of formatting on the tape prior to anything ever being written on it. And I've wondered, well, how do I figure out what that is? Here's another example. I think this is uh, the Scotch. This is the 3M. And uh, maybe these are a little bit older. But uh, pretty much the same thing. It doesn't say pre-formatted. It just says formatted. But still the DC600HC. And uh, the reels say the same thing. Pre-formatted, do not degauss. Again, strong message. So something was on these prior to them being written on. Now, I do see things that are between the blocks that are written here. But I'm not 100% certain that what I see between the blocks was, was the pre-formatting. It may or may not have been. It, I could, you know, assume that it is, but I wanted to know for sure. So I started looking for a blank DC600HC uh, QIC cart cartridge. And uh, not too long ago, I found one. And here it is. Um, the uh, 3M DC600HC data cartridge tape. And it says here, I-O-T-A-M-A-T. I ought mat. I have no idea how to pro correctly pronounce that, but it says the uh, the I O T A M A T format. And before you make too much fun of me about how I completely botched that name, uh, both just now and will again throughout this video, um, I wanted to point out that af right after making this video, I actually started doing a little bit of online research on this particular word, which I clearly hadn't done before. And uh, one of the best sources I found which doesn't really define what these things are, but puts them in context for me, is this 1989 3M compatibility and competitive cross-reference information data cartridge tape products. Uh, manual, 18-page manual or brochure, not sure which, but of course it is found on um, bitsavers.org for us. And when I turn to this page here, page 3, I see uh, you know a chart with the uh, tape cartridge characteristics and I'm noticing alpha mat, delta mat, gamma mat, kappa mat, theta mat, ruo mat, nu mat, iota mat, and zeta mat. And this certainly all appear to be letters of the Greek alphabet. And so I looked up just iota, and it's the ninth letter of the Greek alphabet. So, you know, there's something here. And it, I'm starting to get the feeling that one company... Um, wanted to put their own names to formats and I'm just ge just guessing now that the last letter of all these that are the same is MAT and that's the last three letters of the six letter word format maybe I'm going a little bit too deep but and when I see the trademark after every single one of these um, except for a uh, new mat don't know if that was a typo or if that was intentional um, I you know I started to see a theme that maybe there are different formats uh, that may look a lot like or maybe very different from uh, what we're about to analyze here, but that's putting this in context. So I just thought I'd point that out before we went too much further in this video. It doesn't tell me what it is, it just gives me a context for it. So if anyone has any more information on that, I'd love, uh, love for you to share that, either under this video or um, on my blog at uh, qicreader.com. Um, all right, let's move on. So evidently it's a specific kind of format here, which may or may not be the same as the format that was originally on these uh, cartridges, but I have to start somewhere. So, and as you can see, it's nice and shiny new. That's the, uh, the reflection on the cellophane here. We even have a barcode. Isn't that cool? Now we're focused there. 
We have a barcode here. So I think we should um, open it up right here for all of you. So here we go. 3M factory sealed. Looks like it's even in French. Maybe it's French, maybe it's not. I don't know French. Here we go. This should go along with all of those unboxing videos we see on YouTube. Right. The IOT mat format. Fantastic. We'll open this thing up. Now, the tape can't be that old because it says Gigabyte is here. <laughs> so I'm thinking, you know, this particular tape might have been manufactured in the very late 80s, maybe very early 90s. Um, so, but again, I'll just be very curious about what this is. All right. So let's see what we have here. Ah, very cool. The 3M um, iAutomat format. It's trademarked, so maybe I should learn how to say it right. DC 600 HC data cartridge tape. And um, the reels don't say uh, pre-formatted, do not degauss or anything like that. So it doesn't, it doesn't lend itself it, it doesn't send quite as strong a message as these other tapes. So, but what I'm hoping is that it is the same format on here that we have on here, just because they're both DC 600 HCs. So, next thing that we're going to do is set this aside. Maybe we'll even get rid of the cellophane. And um, we'll turn the autofocus on the camera back on. And we'll insert this, and we're going to do a read. Now, this is interesting. I think that looks right. Or does it? Hang on. Let's have a look at that. I didn't, I, I'm seeing something that doesn't look quite right. Aha! Uh -huh. So, this tape is in the rewound position. This is the beginning. Very curious what position that that is in right out of the box. I'm glad I noticed that before I put it in and pointed it out. So this is at the end of the tape. So that's, that's pretty clear. We should see the end of tape holes, uh, the beginning of media, end of media here somewhere. And I would imagine, never quite sure where they are, which direction to go. It's hard to see, but there is ever so slight residue of the band. It shouldn't matter here because we're at the end of the tape, not the beginning, and nothing was on it, well, except for the formatting. So, all right, enough playing around with that. Let's, um, let's actually put it in and see what we get. All right, back to some more autofocus. Set these power switches. Okay, so because I know what this tape drive does, I fully expect me to do an initialization and before it reads anything, because the tape uh, the tape head is going to be all the way down in its home position, which should be below anything that's written on it. Should be, may not be, but it should be. Um, I would expect it to go full in reverse all the way to the beginning uh, to for the tape uh, for the tape to initialize itself for the uh, the tape reader to initialize itself. So. We'll do that. I won't make you stay through it all, but we'll go through this process. And there it goes, rewinding the whole way as I expected it to do. Ah, so while I was looking at this, I thought I'd check out the copyright 3M 1990. So now we know. General backup instructions. Advertising new things. General backup practices. Absolutely wonderful stuff. All right, we're almost rewound. Okay. 
that looks very good. So far it's behaved the way it should. I don't see any uh, signs of sticky shed syndrome yet. So um, let's just read track zero and see what we get. So I'll start my uh, start my Saley Logic uh, Logic Analyzer Capture program here and I'll hit go. And away we go. And now it'll take just as long to read this way. And then we'll look at the results. And there we have it. We've read all the way through one direction. The tape is right back where it was when I put it in at the end. And I don't know why not? I'll just leave it there. I'll turn off this. I'll stop the capture. And um, now let's go to the uh, Saley Logic Analyzer user interface and see exactly what we captured. And here is the Saley Logic uh, Analyzer capture, the user interface. Uh, of the DC600HC uh, blank uh, QIC cartridge, track zero going forward. And I'm looking at this now for the first time. So I'm just going to, looks like there was between about 85 seconds of capture. This goes from zero to about 85. And so I'm just going to start zooming in here right in the middle to see what I see. So I'm just hitting the scroll wheel. I guess I need to focus in order for that to work better. Here we go. All right, now this, if you've watched some of my previous videos, this is noise. This is what I would expect to see. But look at this. What is this? This catches my eye here. Ah, this actually looks relatively familiar. I saw this on, um, on those other tapes, those older ones that, uh, that I showed um, on, on camera before I opened this one. This is what I see. Look at this. This certainly looks like structured data signal, and it looks like we have a form of preamble here. Not sure why there's that gap there. Certainly a form of preamble. Something here which, to my as of yet untrained eye, appears to be MFM. Not quite sure. Maybe it's frequency modulation instead of modified frequency modulation. Maybe it's something completely different. Total speculation. Here's what I know it's not. It's not GCR45 because those formats I recognize very, very well. And I can just tell you right now by looking at this, that would produce all kinds of errors, particularly this huge gap here in the middle, which is all of 14.7, uh, 14 uh, 14 14, almost 14.8 microseconds, which is huge compared to, you know, the, the preamble spacing is... What is the period? It's the period that I'm looking at, by the way, the period over here. So when we're looking at the period, which is a full, a full wavelength there, um, one microsecond, yeah. So the most dense you have is one microsecond, but then this huge gap here in the middle is 15.2 microseconds, if I'm going to get the whole period in. Yep, 15.2. So, but this does look familiar. I saw this on uh, on the other cartridges with the uh, with the data blocks written in between them, and my program simply ignored it because it may have it may have recognized this as a preamble, but then this was all erroneous garbage, and it never identified a block because. Uh, in the beginning of a data block because the QIC45 format it signals the beginning of a data block with a sequence of pulses that we just don't see here at all. And uh, check out some of my other videos um, as well as the deep in-depth study of QIC24, QIC11, and the enigmatic Kennedy format, Kennedy QIC64, uh, XX, 6450 or a similar model formats. Those are all GCR45, and the beginning of the block marker looks very, very different. Okay, so I see this. Maybe we'll see what else of those we see. Oh, I see another one. Look at that. Okay. So how far apart are these? Well, maybe I should even start with how wide are they? So if I put the marker right here. 
I'm not sure that's the beginning of it. Is that part of the noise? I don't know. Hang on here. I saw one. See, it's just... I wish I could clear up this noise, because I would love just to see this and nothing else. But, unfortunately, the noise is a part of the hardware setup. Do I see something in front here? Yeah, I do see something in front. That looks pretty consistent. Let's look for... Let's look for another one. Oh, they're all over the place here. Look at that. Look for another one. Do I see that extra space out in front? On this one, I don't. wonder if that means anything. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. I have a tendency to believe not so, because usually anything that's before the preamble or after the postamble uh, usually gets discarded. So that could just have been the end of some of the noise or something. I don't know. I don't quite know as much as I wish I did about this, but, you know, we've come a long way in understanding things from uh, starting at zero. So that's good. Anyway, let's grab this one. Let's look at the width of this one. So I'm going to move marker to the beginning right here. And over here at the end, I'll do the same thing. And I'm going to put the second marker right here. And the uh, analysis metrics here, whoops, I guess I didn't get that to stick. There, now it's sticking. Okay, so the beginning is one flag and the end is two flag. So uh, T1 and T2 is what we have here. And so <clears throat> it looks like the difference is 0.1964 microseconds. Okay, that's good to know. So the next thing I think I want to know so this is this is just where it is in the scope of uh, from the time that I hit the start capture to the time that I stopped capturing. That's what that is. Um, so the next thing I want to know is how far apart are these things. So I'm actually going to leave two right there. Eh, no I'm not. I'm going to move two. I'm going to get rid of one, and I'm actually going to put two right here now. There. There's two. So I'm going to find the one previous to this and put the one at the end of it. And I'm going to see the difference uh, between the two of them, which will not include the width of one of them. And that pretty clearly looks like the next one. Okay. And so I'll put two at the end of this one. And let's see. Oops. My bad. I should have put one at the end of this one. I'm not thinking. Sorry. Try that again. I put two over here. And did I zoom in enough for that? I did. I got that right on there. Okay. Yeah, I think that's pretty clear that that's the next one, the, the previous one. All right, so let's put one right there at the beginning of this. All right, there it is. One to two. Okay, 19.4905, 19.49, almost 19.5 microseconds. Or is it milliseconds? No, it's milliseconds. I'm sorry. The micro is the, the funny little U. MS is milliseconds. So I think that's important to, uh, important to distinguish to make. Okay, and so now... Um, let's see what it is with. We could have just done simple addition, but why? We are right here. We might as well make this measurement. Okay, so there we are. The distance between 1 and 2, which is the end of this one, to the end of this one. So now we see that that is 19.689, blah, 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 uh, milliseconds. Okay. We have a general idea now how often this occurs.
So I am going to get rid of the one marker and the two marker. By the way, the way I do that is I just hit the one on the keyboard and uh, and I hit escape to either make it go away or if I hit the one on the keyboard then I just click on I mouse over wherever I want it and then I click and it stays that's how I do that if I want to get rid of it I hit the one again which I guess frees it up and then I hit escape and that makes it disappear I want to go over to the beginning now because I'm kind of anxious to see how all of this begins alright what do we see here so I turned the capture on before I got the tape to move so this at the very beginning here has to be the noise from the uh, from the tape reader hardware and I have a separate video about how that noise works and all such things and so now I'm just going to search for some kind of organized signal. This seems a little bit harder because I'm not exactly sure how far in or out I should zoom in order to see anything meaningful particularly since some of those things those uh, you know narrow narrow segments of of uh, data pulses there were so narrow at this level they were hard to see so I'm gonna scroll through here and see if anything jumps out aha well that certainly looks like something oh look at this alright now I did notice something like this on those other tapes as well and it immediately threw me uh, when I first started reading them because I didn't know what to make of this. I thought, well, this is really strange. But I see the same thing here at the beginning. <clears throat> now, do you see how I scroll through here? It's almost like the tape was speeding up as this was written because the frequency of these things gets narrower. See how they start out really wide and sloppy here and they get narrower as the time goes through here? And this goes on. Now, I'm just going to pick a section in the middle here and zoom in real close and see what these are. Now, this could be noise, right? That may not be on the tape. That could just be noise. But these certainly look like preambles to me. You know, the preamble postamble. I don't know what else you would call it. And there seems to be an area of greater density towards the edge here. And, and this is actually very close to, if not identical, to what I was expecting to see because this is the stuff that's on those other tapes. In addition to the recognizable uh, QIC 4.5 data blocks, with the preamble, the data block marker, postamble, what have you, they're all they're very recognizable there. Yeah, and see at the the end they become more dense. So let's just have a look at that since we're in the middle. So the full cycle here is 444. The period is what I really want to look at. I'm not so interested in the frequency. The period here is 2.25 uh, microseconds. And that we do have the U there indicating micro, so I apologize for the confusion. And so this more dense area here, where it appears to be these last four are more dense, then this is 1.1 uh, microseconds as opposed to 2.1. So this to be, appears to be now half the distance of this one. 1.1, 1.0. And this seems to be closer to what I'm used to for a preamble, postamble, is this more dense one here, the, the one microsecond. Just generally speaking, with the tapes that I've looked at, that's a more common width for um, a preamble, postamble po po pulse, right, where the pulses are as dense as they get in sequential. And two seems a little bit wide. So let's just keep reading here, scrolling through. And it looks like a whole lot of the same thing without looking too deeply. So let's see how far this goes. This goes for a ways. Oh, and then it ends abruptly, doesn't it? And then we see these things. All right, so there's something in between there. So we see these things, these bursts. It looks like they're bursts of pulses to me. All right. 
and it looks like we have the same pattern here. Let's do some quick um, analytics. I'm going to go from the end of this one here. This time we'll start with this. The end of this one here to the end of this one here. Okay, there we go, one to two. So this is the full distance between the end of one to the end of another. And it looks like that distance is 0.281 or 0.282 microseconds. And then the width, I should just be able to fairly simply do here by just moving the one. Yeah, and it just snaps right to that. That's good. And so now the, the width of one of them is uh, 0.1265. 0.1266 microseconds. Okay, and this seems to last for quite some time because we see that area of density there. But it doesn't know. It doesn't really look like there's a very defined starting place because look how fuzzy this is. It's almost like it starts writing immediately as the tape is ramping up to speed, and as it's ramping up to speed, these things become more and more, more and more dense. And you can, at that level, you really see it, right? You can see this is really wide by comparison, and it just gets more dense. And the more we move here to the left, the more dense it becomes until the, the density level is maintained, I guess, unchanged, very static, which, which in indicates to me that that's when the tape is actually reaching full speed when it's written. Again, just speculation because I don't know that. I've never seen how this process is done. This is the first one of these without data written on it. That I've ever looked at. All right, let's look at this chunk right here because I think we're going to find that right immediately after that is this very familiar looking thing here that we saw right in the middle, right? This, this um, nearly identical, bisymmetrically identical thing. I don't know that it is, but just looking at it visually, it certainly looks like it. Once I write a program to analyze the space between this, maybe I'll figure out exactly what you know this is saying, if, if it means something of significance. And I think that'll come maybe as I learn more formats like FM and MFM, because so I haven't quite conquered those yet. Although my friend uh, Mattis, in, in Mattis in Sweden has done a fantastic job with that, so I'd like to give him a shout out and an applause here. Oh, look at this, right beforehand. We have one of these. Do we have any of those between here? How many of those do we have between the end of these, these bursts, these bisymmetrical things? How many of those do we have in between that and this big thing? It looks like just the one. So we have the one here. Now, this looks different. It's all. It might be bi. It might be um, bilaterally symmetrical, right? What's on this side is the, exactly the mirror image of what's on this side, but it certainly looks different than let's say the one, than let's say the one after this big block, right here. See, there's more stuff in here. I don't know what, but there's more stuff. So I'll I'll give a report once I learn to. Uh, um, decipher what this particular language is, these pulse timings. All right, enough of that. Let's get to this bigger, bigger block here. What is this big thing? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Wow. Well, this does look like the MFM that I was looking at on another tape. Haven't written programs for, but uh, again, I think my friend Mattis has done so. So this, this looks like some structured data here. That's what this looks like. And again, this seems relatively familiar to what I saw um, before the first data block, uh, the QIC45 data block, on those other um, preformatted tapes I showed in the video. So it is looking, at least visually, so like it's very very similar to if not identical to the 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 non QIC45 marks it's not QIC I'm saying the wrong term GCR group code recording uh 45 in between those particular blocks 
I'm seeing these things. And, and it really looks just exactly the way I remember the other ones. So let's see what this gap is here. That's curious. Okay. Well, <coughs> certainly looks like it's an intentional. And it looks like it might um, be equal to the gap, just visually here, it looks like it might be equal to the gap in these other little bilaterally symmetrical things. So let's again look at this gap here. And I'm just looking at the the width now at 14 microseconds. That certainly looks familiar. Let's see if the width here is 14 microseconds as well. It certainly is. It certainly is. So these gaps mean something of significance. And I don't know what. Well, let's see how far apart these two gaps are. So, I'll go from the beginning of this one now to the beginning of this one. And now we're looking at 2.4 microseconds. I don't know what these numbers mean, but hopefully they're going to make sense uh, to someone that might be watching this, or even to me later as I do deeper study. So let's look at this whole thing here. We'll take a measurement on the whole big starter block. There's one at the beginning, and we'll move two all the way to the end here. Okay, and now this, this big chunk here is 14.42 microseconds. Not sure if we've come, th come through that distance before yet or not, but it seems like there are how many of these bands in between, these break bands? So we've got one, two, three, four, five, five. So it looks like a total of six large segments. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six of these large segments. That appears to be straight straight uh, continuous pulse preamble post amble. Oh, it looks like there's a little bit of data in here. Something that isn't just straight ones or whatever this means. There's a lot of it. This could be phase lock loop timing data. Or something like that. So that it tells the circuitry this is this is how, what you set your clock to. It could be a clock synchronization. Again, just a wild guess that, that is what this could be. Okay, so I think now we're going to see nothing but these things all the way to the end. That's what I suspect. Let's see if that's the case. So let's zoom to about this level and see if we come upon anything more interesting all the way at the end. So we see these things throughout. As we speed through the nine, nearly 90 seconds of reading this tape. Oh, saw something there. Did you see? Oh, there it is. Look at this. We have something. All right, that's noise. But these things still exist. You know, and I wonder if these are numbered. These could be sequentially numbered as well. That occurs to me. I'd like to find out, so when I crack the code of this language, um, I'll let everyone here know. Oh, there's a big thing here. Big chunk of data. Okay, look at this. That is preamble postamble. Since it's at the end of the tape, I'm going to call it a postamble. Unless it's at the beginning, because we saw it at the end? I don't know. That, that one's a complete mystery to me. I was not expecting to see that tape wound, uh, you know, to the end like that, or what I've come to learn is the end from all of my work so far. All right. So I wonder if that's all this is. We'll just jump here quick to the end. And... That looks like it's all it is, just based on this. We'll do a quick scan through the middle here and see if we see. What I like to do is just to 
just to tighten this up until it just turns all white and then as I scroll through quickly I see if there's any you know any breaks in it because usually if we see any data at all you know any wider gaps we'll see it at just at this level because usually the gaps are um, a, a multiple wider than the continuous um, re repetitive consecutive <laughs> adjacent pulses. You know what I'm trying to say, I hope. Well, and it's not scrolling very fast at this at this speed, but I really didn't see anything in here. And I don't think I'm going to find anything. I think it's just going to be all preamble all throughout. So all yeah, noise. That is a big preamble postamble. It is a big postamble. So we'll just zoom in at some random spot here in the middle. And yep, that's what we see. So here, the period is 2 microseconds, 2.2 .2 microseconds. And it certainly looks pretty, pretty consistent throughout. And um, let's see if there's any... I know what I wanted to do. I wanted to see if... I wanted to see the width of this thing, which is a little bit more difficult because of its size. But let's see. Let's see what the width is. So let's look at the beginning here. And there we go. That's the beginning. And where's the end? Boy, it is way off here. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right, zoom in a little bit here so I can see some resolution. Yeah, close enough. There's the end. All right, one to two. This big long thing is um, huh, almost half a second. 0.49744. Almost exactly half a second, uh, which is a really, really, really long time when it comes to these QIC cartridges. Um, a lot of data blocks get packed into half a second um, on the tapes that I've read so far. So the last thing to do is to see if there's anything of interest afterwards or if that's it all the way to the end. And it looks like all noise to me just scrolling through really quickly. So that's the initial take, the initial analysis of what we see on uh, the... the 90-some seconds of this uh, tape read. And I think it did take 90 seconds. There was a, a while, a delay, before I turned off uh, the tape cartridge, uh, the capture, even after the tape came to its end. You know, and sometimes I think I've, I've said that I can see where that is because this has this tendency to get just a little bit denser. Um, I'm not sure that that is going to hold true here. No, not so much. I really didn't. I mean, there's a ever so slight change there. Well, see, I came by the. Yeah, I can't tell. I just cannot tell the difference between where the tape's running and the tape isn't running. I know for a good several seconds, you know, it could have been five, it could have even been ten, where the, the tape stopped moving because it came to the end. And I just let the capture go for a few minutes as I was talking on camera. But anyway, there you have it. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful um, in the um, the steps to reverse engineer uh, what is the DC600HC pre-format code. And I'm going to provide a download of the Saley logic data file that we've just been looking at here for your own analysis to uh, do with whatever you want to. Uh, and there will be a link for that download um, below this video in the comments section. So um, I look forward to hearing from you. Enjoy.